Good day, everyone. We're here at the Postgraduate Institute of Management, where the AMDISA 2016 Executive Council and Regional Conference is currently underway. It is hosted by the Postgraduate Institute of Management, University of Sri Jaiwardenepura, and the Institute of Certified Professional Managers. Joining us now is Dr. Tanbir Ahmed Chaudhry, Professor and Dean of East West University in Bangladesh. Professor Chaudhry has over 25 years of teaching experience at the university level and has also served the university community for a good number of years as, senior, as a senior administrator. Welcome to our program today. Thank you. You have presented a paper uh, titled An Overview of South Asian Scenario Networking and Collaborations. Could you tell us a little bit about this, please? So I prepared this paper and we have observed that South Asian countries have many research work. And from this research work, it is highlighted that South Asian countries are lagging behind the, up to the expected level of education. And most of the countries have the similar types of problem. And whatever we have observed, less allocation in education sector. And there is also some lackings in the policy decision of many countries of South Asia. But if we compare it with the developed countries, we have observed they are doing better. And different research report of British Council, Asian Development Bank, and Australian National University, it has also observed that South Asian countries are behind the standard level of networking in educational sector. But another good point is there that a large number of information and data are available in the South Asian countries. So many research may be conducted on the basis of that data. And MDSA is an association which may take the leadership role in promoting all the countries together. And MDSA may also try to may consider to establish a research wing and some specific research with the statistical data and analysis may be presented in near future under MDSA umbrella. As a result, this reason will be beneficial from the identification of problem. Then they may give some steps how to implement these types of suggestions, and that will help to develop the education sector in the South Asian countries. And definitely, the types of uh, regional cooperation also helps to interact among the different educational administration and administrator and faculty members of different countries. So we may know each other, and we may identify what things we can be shared from the other countries. And I think all the countries' educational institute will be benefited from these types of endeavor. All right. Um, the, your participation so far in the conference, what have you been able to glean from it in terms of networking and collaboration? Uh, I observed that many of the institutional head is interested to make joint research as well as faculty exchange program, student, uh, uh, student also uh, mutually, student may also be visited different institutes and learn about that types of thing. And we have the similar types of uh, regional and cultural thing. So that helps us to build up these types of thing. And many of us are able to express our views about our countries. And we are also getting many of the positive solutions from other countries. So that will definitely help to boost up our educational institute. All right. Um, so uh, as Dean of the Faculty of Business and Economics at East West University, what has your experience been uh, as a Dean of that uh, institute? Uh, our university uh, is also trying to develop the research sector and international cooperation. So in our university, they also have a Center for Research and Training Institute. And university try to promote the research and international collaboration. And for that, university also provide finance some of the project uh, research conducted by the faculty members. And they also 
provided finance to participate in different international conference seminars and to present the papers. As a result, our faculty member will also learn about the recent development in the educational sector, research sectors, and whatever things we should learn from these types of international cooperation and research that may be implemented in the development of the institution in particular and in general that will help our country also to boost up the education sector. Uh, why do you think that the education sector in South Asia is perhaps lagging behind the rest of the world? Uh, why is the mark not as high as it should be? So one thing we have observed, the allocation from the GDP is comparatively lower in comparison to the other developed countries. Another is technologically we are not that much advanced. Still, we are many of our countries are in rudimentary stage of implementation, that types of things. And some policy agenda for the development of education, a long-term policy should be taken. So, and phase by phase that may be implemented. And the UGC of different country should also take more role to develop the educational sector of our countries, different countries. All right, um, and for our viewers, could you explain a little bit about the educational backdrop in Bangladesh? Educational, in Bangladesh, what we have observed recently, the enrollment in the primary education and secondary education has increased. And the positive scenario, previously female education was not that much developed in Bangladesh, but now it has tremendously developed up to the HSC level. But in the university level, the number of public universities is comparatively less. Now private universities are growing up and they try to accommodate the students. Now in Bangladesh, recently, the percentage of higher education is also progressing. And they're also type to cope up with the international standard. So our UGC is more strengthened now. And Bangladesh government is also trying to develop the sector. Even the World Bank also financed some of the projects on uh, definitely on a soft loan window scheme, under the soft loan window scheme. And government and UGC is also trying to develop the infrastructure, technological advancement, and research for that. And that contributes comparatively better. And we hope if the government takes some initiative, long-term plan for the development of education sector, then definitely our country will also be it, uh, also be benefited from that types of thing. Um, how involved is the government of Bangladesh in the education system? So, education system in our country, up to SSC level the education is almost free in the government sector. Government also provides all the books and other things up to the SSC level free of cost. And government have a small, uh, comparatively a small number of public schools, but they are also providing partial finance to the private schools and colleges to develop. And recently government also introduced that if a person becomes that want to be a teacher of a school or college, they are supposed to pass some of the examination. And after that recruitment procedure will also be a better and some quality teachers will be recruited. And through that way, the uh, in SSC and HSC level education should be developed. And government also trying to increase the research activities in the universities level. And recently we have observed even in our medical sector, higher studies are also have medical and engineering sector, higher education is also growing, as well as in social science sector. So a balanced development of all the sector, social science, engineering, medical science, will help our country to go ahead. All right. Um, what is the feedback from the corporate sector on the uh, sort of the quality of the graduates that are being uh, put through the system? So government also monitor for higher education, university grants commission monitored the activities of the universities. And they monitored the activities as well as 
if we want to change or uh, introduce a new course curriculum or if we want to change the course curriculum that must have to be evaluated and approved by the university grants commission and university grants commission before implementing these types of thing they also send it to different uh, expert uh, expertise to comments on that and after review of that things they are implementing that types of thing and now they are also trying to maintain the educational quality of the private sector also if there is no regulatory measures for the private universities or institutes then education may not up to the mark so that's why UGC as well as ministry of education try to develop that things and some monitoring and surveillance is also there and we hope that more vigilance will help to boost up the educational sector in our country all right um and uh, do you see a sort of shift in focus in terms of the industrial sectors that are po more popular now in bangladesh in industrial sector basically the banking insurance and the corporate industry is growing up and as well as it sector computer science and electrical engineering these types of sector is growing up so normally in our country have observed a majority of the student is try to study in business administration they wants to be the business leader in corporate sector and you, in our country private sector is contributing a lot in the economic development and in the gdp so they need more business administrator so that's why business administration and economics education is playing a vital role in our country and as well as some engineering sector like computer science pharmacy electrical engineering this types of thing is also going up and some good institutions in our country bangladesh university of uh, engineering and technology and others many of our uh, of and the different university many of our graduates are also working in developed countries in very high position and we also observe even in usa nasa and many other organization they are working that indicates that our country can also able to produce good researchers good students and they can contribute in the global economic environment also um in your research have you seen uh, particular similarities uh, within the south asian region in terms of how the education system is uh, set up yeah one thing i have observed previously also know that sri lanka is comparatively in better condition in the educational root level education sector the literacy rate of sri lanka is probably highest and recently our countries and other countries has developed but sri lanka for a long period of time their educational literacy rate at tertiary level is very high so this is one of the positive thing of sri lanka as well as india is a large country they also have a numerous institution they also have some very good institute in their in, uh, country and basically the indian in different indian institute of management indian institute of technology they are providing world class education and many of the good universities are also in india so that's and they also have a very big research information because big countries with information and other things so india is also going ahead and uh, pakistan is also doing but up to i don't think up to that level of thing they are progressing previously they are also in better condition and probably nepal and maldives are comparatively uh, in the uh comparatively a little bit lag behind the other countries mm -hmm. all right um and uh just to conclude uh have you noticed any um differences in uh how the curriculums are taught uh between the countries is there a major difference or is it similar no if we consider if we compared the good institution of all the sub countries almost the course curriculum is similar and there is standard i think also good very good standard they have thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing your thoughts with us i uh, thank you also and thank you tv channel for calling me thank you